Welcome to Title Talk with Kathy Schwartz, Parent Involvement Coordinator for Adam Central. Let's talk about how you can take advantage of title programs and help your student achieve in the classroom. Welcome to November's edition of Title Talk. Some dates you need to remember. November 18th, that is the second of the idea exchange and the topic for that is setting realistic goals. Now that we've had our parent-teacher conferences, now it's important to send some, set some realistic goals and to keep motivation for good study habits. So try to make that. It's at 6 p.m. in the cafeteria. You wonder what that noise is? That is something that I thought about. Uh, it is for my podcast listeners that uh, it's a signal that I'm changing topics. Now, if you're watching the video, you have um, a graphic on the screen that indicates when I am switching topics. But that signal is for my podcast listeners, and that's a signal that I'm changing gears. Now on to the home and school connection for this month. The first article was an atmosphere of learning. This article dealt with the connection between a child's learning and the supportive learning environment at home. They gave three tips on ways to create such a space in your home. Number one, stock up. Fill your house with items that your child can use to explore and investigate. Books, a drawer for math and science supplies, maps, anything that if they want to take off and find out something about, they can use it. The second suggestion was build on their interests. Notice what things your child is into and help him learn more about it. Read books together on the subject, create a hallway gallery on the topic, or posters with interesting facts that they have learned. The third suggestion was to learn together. Learning something new as a family unit. Suggestions such as learn sign language or enjoy a new hobby. Expand your knowledge and of course board games such as Scrabble or Boggle or Monopoly. There are so many choices in the board games also help you learn it together. I'm thankful for as Thanksgiving approaches, lots of things are said about what we are thankful for. Here's an activity to help your child express what he is thankful for. First, select six different colors of crayons and assign a category to each color, such as red for a person, blue for a place, green an object, yellow a food, orange an animal, and purple can be your choice. Next, select a crayon and draw a heart on a piece of paper. Inside that heart, write what you are thankful for in that category, such as a red heart, your child can write mom, and the yellow heart, which is food, maybe tacos. Finally, proudly display your group of hearts and have the whole family do it and share it. In the short notes, they had some interesting uh, suggestions. The first one was called Promises Matter. Before you promise anything, be sure you can follow through with it. This builds trust in your child. In a family gathering, uh, teach your child to speak up about certain allergies that he has or others have. That way you learn, he learns to ask questions about ingredients. The last thing uh, is worth quoting is, when you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. What a great way and a great quote to teach your child. Conflict Resolution Know-How. This article de deals with conflict resolution skills and to help, help your child maintain friendships, solve problems, and stand up for himself in positive ways. Two, two strategies were shared. One is called red light and green light. 
children have to recognize that a situation where they may be angry or frustrated and that causes a red light situation. That's a signal to walk away and pause. Take a deep breath until you are calm. Then that makes the green light turn on. Then you can proceed into talking to someone and finding a solution. The I statements conflict resolution strategy is to teach your child to start a conversation with I instead of you. It puts focus on how he is feeling and not on what other people are doing to him. Such as, I get angry when I'm yelled at instead of saying, you make me angry. Conflict resolution is a very important skill for everyone to learn how. The activity corner talked about persuasive writing. Have your child create a commercial to buy an unlikely product, such as an ice cube or a rock. There are three steps to this. Describe what they are to sell. Then they write a script for a commercial focusing on details and then present their ad. This is a way of teaching a child when you are trying to, get, to teach them persuasive thinking that they need to have certain steps to get them to convince someone to do some. Be careful, they may try it on you. Now on to the reading connection, the beginning edition. The first article dealt with playing with ABCs. Recognizing the letters of the alphabet is one of the building blocks to a strong reader. Here are some activities to learn your ABCs. Number one, alphabet train. Construct a train out of cardboard boxes, small ones, and cover them with construction paper and write the letters on the railroad car. This gets them to recognize the uh, letters of the alphabet. Alphabet Doodles deals with may, uh, calling attention to the different curves and loops that each letter has and how it makes it different from the other letters. Have your child write that letter uh, quite large on a piece of paper and let them create a character from that shape of that letter. And letter search is choose a word and have your child search out that letter in other printed materials. That, that, this will familiarize your child with different types, fonts, and letter recognition. Book picks, and they focused on read aloud favorites. I love this first book. The title is quite interesting. Do not lick this book. This is a book about a little microbe called Mim. And he gives readers a humorous introduction to germs, explaining where they live and what they do. And do not lick this book. The second book is Froggy Gets Dressed. Froggy wants to play outside in the snow. When he goes outside, he's forgotten something. This is a great book for practicing prediction and observation. Katherine Johnson is a book about Katherine Johnson, a little girl who always wants a job with math. This biography tells the story how this little girl reaches for the stars and ends up working for NASA. The fourth book, The Treasure, is a classic folk tale about a little boy's search for a treasure near a castle. I wonder if he will find it in the end. Get the book and find out. In the article, Make Words Stick, for your child to learn new words, he needs to use them over and over again. Here are three way ways to help him cement the meaning of the word into their memory. The first step is C. Point out objects 
or situations that demonstrate the word. For example, if the word is cow, when you pass a cow in the field, point it out. Or if the word is funny, point out someone who's laughing and said they must have read something funny. Number two is explain. When introducing a new word to your child, explain to them in their words they are familiar with what it means. And the last is repeat. Look for opportunities to use to the, new, uh, the new word and repeat it and repeat it. Usage makes for memory. The next one deals with getting the most out of audiobooks. We find in the library we check out a lot of audiobooks to children. And to get the most out of it, follow along with a printed version of the book. That way your child makes a connection between what they hear and what they see. Also stop the recording and discuss what is happening in the book and what happens next. Compound combos. On separate cards, write the two words that make up a compound word. Do this for several compound words. Mix the cards up and make your child combine two words to make one. And then explain the meaning. If it creates a nonsense word, label that and see if you can find one that does make sense. Tell me about your drawing. This is a great writing exercise for your child. Have your child draw a picture. Ask him to tell you about what he has drawn. Next, have him create a story for that picture. Even offer to write it down for him as he dictates it to you. This allows the creative juices to flow without worrying about the mechanics of, the, of writing it down. Now on to the reading connection, the intermediate edition. The first article was called Dig into Reading. Here are three suggestions of what to do after your child has finished reading a book. These activities increase comprehension through visualization, predicting, and summarizing. Number one, map the setting. Have your child sketch the different settings the main character travels through in his journey through the book. This gives him a visualization of what actually happened. The second suggestion is have your child write a prequel or a sequel. Have your child create a new chapter in the book at the beginning or the end. Have them think about what happened before that first chapter they read or what ha what's going to happen next in the story of the main characters. Build a story pyramid. They said only allow five lines in your pyramid. Line one, list the main characters. Two, list words that describe those characters. Line three, describe the setting. Line four, explain the problem the character faces. And line five, tell how it is solved. This is a great way to have your child learn how to summarize a story they have read. The book picks in the intermediate level, the first one is Wish Tree. Red, a very old oak tree, helps two children become friends in the neighborhood. Indie Cars is a nonfiction book that offers an in-depth look at indie car races. This is a great one for a kid from Indiana who loves race cars. The third book is Two Dogs in a Trench Coat. This is the first story of the Two Dogs series, Sassy and Waldo, as they sneak into Stuart's school to protect him, and they are mistaken for new students. If you sailed 
On the Mayflower is a great book for the book of November. This nonfiction book answers questions about the pilgrims, their voyage, life after they, and life after they reached the new world. This is a great book to study and, and find the true meaning of Thanksgiving. Now we're moving on to foolproof proofreading. This is a good thing to, to read about because it talks about spell check. It's not, it's good, but it's not foolproof for checking. So here are some helpful ways to check for further mistakes. Take a break between writing and proofing. Rested eyes help spot mistakes quickly. They also suggest to print it out the way that you get uh, a new views. You can see it in print and you can see it on the screen. Also, list pr problem words like the twos, two, two, and two, your, and, and have, them have your child double check if they use the right word. Lastly, read it out loud, slowly, and focus on only the words that are written. Sometimes our mind adds words that aren't there. The next article talked about boost conversation skills. The simple act of having a conversation with your child will increase their conversation skills and ability to join in on classroom discussions and listening in group discussions. First of all, choose a topic that your child is interested in. This is very important to get them talking. Then have them practice good listening. Ask your child to listen to what others say and make a comment on what that person has said. The third thing is to keep it going. Ask your child to think of a question that she can ask the other person to keep the conversation going. It is so important to practice conversation skills. The next section talked about humorous homophones. A homophone is that are those words that are sound the same but are spelled different and different meanings. For exam example, deer, D-E-E-R, the animal that runs through the woods, and D-E-A-R, which someone you love. They tell you to make a list of the, the homophones and then make up silly sentences using two or three pairs of homophones in the sentence. This can be challenging, but a lot of fun. They also said create a writer's notebook for your child. Creating a writer's notebook for your child can, where your child can write down ideas to use later when he's stuck on what can I write. Some topics or categories you could have him write down is things about me or the perfect meal or sweet dreams. Write down those dreams that you remember from the night before. Another category, my favorite things. Another uh, article spoke to read around the world and it says expose your child to different cultures which may spark an interest of researching and learning, learning more about them. They suggested exp exploring the different versions of different cultures have for well-known fairy tales. This can bring that culture closer to your child. That concludes this month's title talk. Until ne next time, this is Kathy Schwartz, and remember, keep talking. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Title Talk. If you'd like to know more about our programs, please contact the Adam Central Title staff. Until next time, keep talking.